Are you looking for a travel trailer that's less than 20 feet long and easy to tow? Well, stick around. We found some awesome floor plans of travel trailers under 20 feet long. Hey guys, Mike from RV Blogger here in front of the camera and Susan's behind the camera. And if you've seen us before on YouTube, welcome back to our channel. If this is your first time seeing us, welcome aboard. Susan and I make tons of videos all about RVing and we invite you to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell when you do so you'll be notified every single week when we put out a brand new video. But without any further ado, let's get started on our reviews of awesome travel trailers under 20 feet long. This travel trailer is the Coachman Clipper model number 12,000 ROK. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 2,115 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,345 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 3,725 pounds. These numbers do not add up, but this is what is on Coachman's website. It just goes to show that sometimes the numbers that are displayed on campers online are wrong and you should double check them anytime you need to. The hitch weight on here is 225 pounds. It measures in at 16 feet, one inch long, and it sleeps up to three people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side is where the commode and some storage are located. Then there's a gaucho bed and we are in the bedroom area. You might be wondering where the kitchen is and that's on the back of this trailer and we'll be showing you that soon. Now directly on my right is where the bathroom is located in here. And this is a small cassette toilet that you can use and it's kind of like a pop-up camper type setup but at least you can go to the bathroom in your camper if you want to. And there's a little curtain that you can pull around for some privacy while you're in here using the bathroom. Now, the way that this works is it's what's called a cassette toilet. And so you've got this little knob here, you just pull it out, the whole toilet comes out and then you can pull the cassette container out of here and dump it either at the sewer connection on your campsite or you can just take it to the bathhouse and empty it right into a toilet in there. So it's pretty convenient as far as that goes. But again, it's really just a toilet to use in your camper if you need to. I would think if you were in here, you would probably be using the bathrooms at the bath houses in the uh, campground or something like that. But let us know, what do you do in your camper? You know, there's a lot of folks that have a full bathroom with a shower and they still use the bathhouse at the campground. What do you do? Let us know in the comments down below do you use your bathroom in your camper or do you use the bathrooms in the bathhouses and why? We would love to hear from you on that topic. Also, you've got three nice sized shelves with some open storage. They've got the cargo netting here to hold things in place for you. Over here is a couple more spots where you have some open storage. You have a nice max air fan in here too, so it'll move a lot of air if you want to get a nice breeze going in here. And then we have our little couch set up right here so you can relax a little bit hang out inside your camper but this is also another bed and this is sort of like a gaucho bed type setup so you just pull this out and then you just sort of rearrange these cushions to create another bed now if you did that in here we would end up with a bed that's about 54 inches long and 32 inches wide so you know, a, a kid could easily sleep on here. I don't really think an adult would be very comfortable on here at all. But if it's two parents and one kid, I think you would make out just fine. So a couple last things about this couch. This couch also serves as a dinette. And there's actually a table underneath of the couch. It goes in this storage cabinet below. And you can see the table right down there. You can pull that out and set it up here. And so this couch serves as a place to relax. It serves as a bed and it can also work for your dinette. Now, just above the couch is where this window is located. And these curtains are pretty cool. You can just take them and Velcro them right up top if you wanna let a little, a little light in here. Or if you're like me and you just want full light, just rip that thing down and there you go, you have full light. Now then you can just fold up your curtain and put it away, or you can just Velcro it back up there whenever you're ready. So just next to the couch is where the air conditioner is located. Now this is a wall mounted air conditioner. And um, you might think, you might look at this and go, man, what a cheapo air conditioner. Well, 
it's true they are inexpensive and so if your ac ever goes bad and you have to replace it it'll be pretty inexpensive to do so and these actually work very well for a camper this size there's just not a lot of space in here and so keeping yourself cool in here with a window mounted or a window unit air conditioner should be just fine down below that you've also got some solar charger controls going on here and then a little place where your air conditioner plugs in they just built a little little cabinet door to make it look a little nicer down below that we've got a charging center here cable outlet here and a receptacle so you could set up a tv on this countertop space so you do have some tv to watch and then you've got below that a really nice big storage cabinet underneath of this countertop now the bed is at the back of this camper also and it's a pretty good sized bed i mean it's 54 inches it looks bigger to me than that i thought it was 60 and it's about 72 inches long so it would be considered a short full-size bed but it looks okay to me i mean it's only six inches short of a queen so i think two people would be able to sleep here pretty easily there's also a couple windows on either side of the bed and then of course you've got some open storage up top with some cargo netting to hold things in place now if Susan and I were to live in here, I'm sure we would use our clear plastic totes in all these open storage areas. And that way we can put things in the totes. They're clear so we can see in them and we know what's in them. And it keeps things from sliding all over the place while you're driving down the road. So just a tip to share on how we would use these types of storage uh, if this was our camper. Uh, also, you'll notice behind me here, there is a heater on the wall. So if you're camping in the shoulder seasons or even in the winter time, uh, you can turn this baby on and it will heat this camper very, very nicely. There's also a receptacle on the wall down below here. So if you need to plug in anything there, you can certainly do so. One last thing is this entire bed does lift on up and you can see that there's plenty of storage underneath. There's also a bank of drawers on the one side and then some open storage area on the other. Now you guys may have noticed that I've been sort of crouching a little bit through the entire video and that's because there's not a lot of ceiling height in here. In fact, let's get a measurement. I can't even stand up and you guys know I'm 5'11", but I can't just stand in here. And there is five feet, nine inches of headroom in here. So for you taller folks and even for you medium height folks like me, man, we're gonna be crouching down in here. But again, this is just a weekend adventure, adventure camper. So, you know, it works for what you need it for. One other thing to note is the doorway in here is a little short. I whacked my head on it already going in and out of here. So you always have to watch out for that uh, in a camper that has low headroom. So here we are at the kitchen area, which is in the back of this camper. It's not inside. So for those of you wondering where the kitchen is, well, here it is. Now, starting from the top, we have some open storage here over top of the refrigerator. And then we have two big cabinets up here with plenty of storage inside. Down below that, we have a, you know, a compact fridge over here with a decent amount of space for your cold items. And then it does have its own little uh, freezer compartment up top. Down below that, we have a graystone grill it almost looks like a black stone but it's gray and you have a nice big cooking surface here so you can make breakfast and dinner and all that fun stuff out here then we have a microwave oven mounted out here as well so that's a really great feature to have you can come out here warm up your coffee or whatever you need to do and there you go you got a nice place for your microwave now the countertop area there is a good amount of space here you actually have a receptacle here. You could set up a coffee pot, toaster, toaster oven, whatever you need, blender for margaritas. If we stop on by and visit you, that would be nice. And then you have a two burner stove. I like that they've turned it long ways instead of having it sideways because it would just chew up more countertop space. And then finally, you have your sink out here. Now this sink faucet is removable and you can add on the uh, shower sprayer and this would also be where you could take a shower with your rig if you didn't want to use the bathhouse in the campground so all in all it's a pretty nice kitchen setup i also like the fact that this big door covers you in case it's raining a little bit so you got a nice place to work and stay out of the rain that way this pop-up camper is the forest river viking model number 1706 xls 
It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 1,642 pounds, a cargo carry capacity of 1,255 pounds for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 2,897 pounds. The hitch weight is just 167 pounds. It sleeps up to six people. And the clothes length is only 12 feet, 11 inches long. But when you open up at your campsite, your length becomes 17 feet, 11 inches long. When you first walk into this pop-up camper on the right hand side is where one of the pop-outs is located. Then we work our way through the kitchen and living area and to the other side of this pop-up where another pop-up is located. So I'll just start the tour on this end of the pop-up camper. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I was younger, I grew up and, and we had a, my, some friends of ours had a pop-up camper. We loved living in it. A neighbor of mine had one. We would go fishing and stuff. And being able to sleep in here with all the tent folds down and just have screen all around you really just reminds me of sleeping in a tent. It is a wonderful experience. But you have all the, all the convenience of also having a roof overhead and an air conditioner inside. So pop-up campers are really, really a cool choice. Now, in this particular uh, end of the camper, uh, a lot of questions that we get about pop-ups are, hey, how much weight can these ends hold on them? Well, this end can hold as much as 1,200 pounds on it. And the size of the bed that's back here, let's get a quick measurement. That's about 74 inches. And the width on this, I'm going to guess, is mm, it's like 48 inches wide. So I would say two adults could sleep here. But, I mean, if Susan and I were sleeping in 48 inches, you know, we'd be fighting for space all night long. But uh, anyway, you can squeeze in here if you needed to. Now, right in front of me here is where your dinette is located. I think they have too short of a table in here. I would like to see a longer table because really only two people could sit here and use this table. Uh, but a nice thing about a freestanding table is you can use it inside, you can use it outside, and you can always stow it away when it's not needed. Now, another great feature inside of here is that these two bench seats do come together in the middle and form even another bed inside of this pop-up camp, pop camper. So if you did that, and we're at the RV show, so I can't really pull it all apart and show it to you. There's just too many people running around. But it's about 74 inches. And then the width on this <clears throat> is very impressive. I mean, you're pushing 58 inches in here so it's almost the same size as a residential queen size bed so ultimately you'd be able to sleep six people in here two on this pop-up two in this area and two on the other side another nice feature about this area of the camper is there is a receptacle right down below here so if you're working at your kitchen table maybe you know scoping out your next campground making some reservations and you need to plug in your computer you can easily do that below so here I am at the other end of the pop-up camper. Susan and I just kind of switched spots when you weren't looking. And uh, this pop-up side can handle a thousand pounds of weight. And if we check out the size of this, well, we already know it's gonna be 74, right? Because everything's 74. And then the width on this is also 48 inches wide. So again, you can get six people in here pretty easily. Now, just to my left and down below, there's a little countertop space here. And then there is some storage underneath that as well. And then the kitchen area here is very, very basic. You have a small kitchen sink up top to go ahead and wash your dishes or wash your hands. And then you have a double burner propane cooktop here. This actually belongs here. It probably got jostled while they were transporting this to the show. Then underneath of your sink and cooktop, there is additional storage there. And then finally down below, there's a little teeny mini fridge down here and it even has a spot for an ice tray. One last feature to note is that there is an outlet just below the bed here. And so let's say you wanted to hook up a coffee pot or a toaster, you could use this little countertop here for that stuff in the morning. This travel trailer is the Forest River Geo Pro model number G15FBS. It has an unloaded vehicle weight of 3,435 pounds, cargo carry capacity of 1,063 pounds, for an overall gross vehicle weight rating of 4,498 pounds. The hitch weight is 498 pounds. It measures in at 17 feet 5 inches long, and it can sleep up to two people. When you first walk into this travel trailer on the right hand side, you'll find your sofa, dinette, and Murphy bed. And then as you wrap on around in through here, you'll have your kitchen towards the front as well as your bathroom. 
Now, our first impression of this travel trailer when we walked in is that, man, there's a lot of room in here for a compact travel trailer. This thing's 17 and a half feet long, but it's got everything that you need. And one of the biggest reasons for that is because of the multi-uses that we're getting out of the front of this camper. And I'll show you what all of those are right now. Now, you can sit here on this nice comfy couch and use this to recline, relax, watch TV, which is in a perfect placement directly across from me. And it even does have a sort of recline. It doesn't recline all the way back, but it does have a little leg rest here so you can, you know, kick back, relax, and watch some TV. Now, its second use, of course, would be the dinette table. So two people can sit here. I guess we could talk about, you know, who's gonna get most of the table and who's gonna get a little bit of the table, but we would figure that out eventually. Susan would win. But anyway, uh, you can use this as your dinette table as well. And you could even use it as a little workstation if you had to get some work done or maybe a little trip planning done for your next destination. And then finally, you can take all this dinette out of here and this converts into a Murphy bed and I'll pull all this apart and show you how that works. So once you remove the dinette table and it just unscrews from this little bracket right here, you lift it straight up, easy as can be. Just grab this little loop and pull it out and then this jack knife's right down. It's really a great setup. And then it has two D rings up here. You just loosen those up and then you pull this down and you make sure that this bottom piece pulls out and watch your fingers they don't get pinched in here that's a bad pinch spot and then you lower this on down boom and there is your Murphy bed setup now one nice thing they do is include these couple of straps that hold all of your sheets and comforter in place while your bed is in the upright position very very nice feature also well before we talk about the rest let's just get a measurement real quick let's see how big this mattress is And it is a no fold mattress, which is great on a Murphy bed. Good point, honey. So this thing is 74 inches by, I'm gonna say about 54 inches. So it is a short full size bed, but a decent one for two people. I mean, in a small trailer like this, you're not gonna get a king size bed in here. So, but you know, at least it's all one mattress instead of those Murphy mattresses that have the fold, that you have to fold the mattress and have to put it away. So very nice comfy setup in that regard. Now on each side of the bed, there is a wardrobe cabinet and you can hang garments from the top. Then below that, you have a nice end table here. There's also a receptacle on each of the two sidebars. So you can put a, you know, a CPAP machine, you can plug in and charge up any devices that you have. There's even a USB port on the other side of the bed over there. And then finally, this has a front window. We have the shade down right now, but you know, it's there if you wanna let some light in here too. Now to put the bed back up, you just simply lift it back into position. But this is the first time I've ever seen this. There's a little safety mechanism here on the front of the bed. You have to pull this knob to release it so that you can put it back up into position. So you know, you're gonna kind of be on the side of the bed instead of the middle. Again, you have to watch your fingers because if this thing slams on the bottom of the bed, it, it'll get you. And then you just put that back up in place and set your D-rings in place to hold it steady. And then you can put your couch back in position. So there you go. Now, as I mentioned, when I was sitting on the couch, the TV is in the perfect spot because it's right across from the couch and it's a good size TV. And I like the fact that they have you know, this nice cabinetry built in around the TV. It looks like the TV is supposed to be here instead of just sort of hanging on a wall. Now, down below that, you have this nice countertop space here. There is a receptacle on top here. So I don't know if you wanted to plug in a coffee machine, make it a coffee bar, you could do that or whatever you need. At least you have some electricity there. Then down below, you have these nice drawers that pull out for additional storage. All right, so as we wrap on around in here, we're gonna get into the kitchen area now. And the first thing you'll note is this large, what could be a pantry cabinet, but it could also be a coat hang or wardrobe cabinet. There is a bar up top, so you can remove these shelves and hang some garments there and then still have additional storage down below. Next to that, we have our Magic Chef refrigerator. It's got a nice, decent size freezer, separate freezer from the refrigerator, always a good thing. This is all 12 volts, so it runs off of the coach battery. Now, as we work our way around, we have a really big cooktop in here. I mean, for a little camper like this, 
This is a huge cooktop. A lot of bigger campers really only have two burners. This one has three. So if you're a, if you're a small camper with a big appetite, maybe this is the one for you. I don't know. But anyway, you got three burners here. And then down below that, you have a convection microwave oven. A couple other nice features around this cooktop are that there is a window over top of it just to get some extra light in here. And there's also a receptacle here. So if you're not cooking on your cooktop, but you want to put I don't know, a toaster, a blender, a crock pot or something on top, you can plug it in right here. So that's a great feature. Now, as we wrap on around, there's a little uh, bottle opener here on the bottom of underneath the countertop. I always like those, you know, crack open a bottle of beer. And then you have your kitchen sink area and countertop area. There's also a tower of power here, so you can plug in your kitchen appliances over here as well. And then the kitchen sink itself is a decent size. It's a nice big square kitchen sink with an overhead faucet. Now this is a balloon hanging on here and that's because all these units are winterized and when they ship them when they're winterized they don't want that antifreeze to you know leak out the pink non-toxic antifreeze that they winterize with so they put balloons on here to catch any little water that might drip out. So you might see those while we're doing some of our tours today. Down below your kitchen countertop we have additional storage underneath of the sink and they don't really have a utility um, drawer so they just put one of these in here for all your kitchen utensils and then next to that you have even more space for stowing things away and then finally there's a window over top of the kitchen sink which is always a nice feature to have that natural light coming in and then there's even a little more open storage up top with some cargo netting to hold things in place so here I am in the bathroom and it's a good size bathroom for a really compact travel trailer so Great size in here, lots of room. Now I'm standing in the shower like I usually do. And as you guys know, I'm 5'11", and man, I've got about an inch over my head to hit the top of this skylight. So there's about six feet of headroom inside the shower. Now the rest of the RV has an arched roof, so it's shorter towards the side walls and taller in the middle, but your ceiling height towards the center of the RV is about six feet, six inches tall. So just to give you an idea how that headspace would work out. Now inside the shower, you know, it's got a removable shower wand. There's three little uh, corner shelves here for your soap and shampoo bottles. They also put in one of these nice little mesh storage bins. So you could put your, you know, some of your shaving stuff in there, maybe just get some stuff out of the way and store it there. And then they have a shower curtain in here which you guys know I'm not a big fan of the shower curtain. I much prefer to see a retractable shower door. Uh, that way it, you don't have a shower curtain blowing in on you and sticking to you when you're taking a shower. But I wouldn't pass up this model just because of that. I would just go and buy my own retractable shower door and install it myself. It's a piece of cake. Anyway, uh, one other thing to note is, and this is really unusual, but I don't see more than two people staying in here and yet they have a bathtub which I could see you throwing a little kid in here, but I don't know that you would have three people or four people in here, you know, two adults and a kid or two. There's just one bed. So maybe this is for your dog to take a bath. I'm not really sure. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you think. Now, outside of the shower, you've got this mirrored medicine cabinet here and a couple or uh, three shelves inside. So plenty of storage there. I love the vanity sink and countertop setup. There's just tons of room on top here for all your stuff that you keep in the bathroom. There's even a receptacle up top if you need to plug in a blow dryer or a curling iron or a shaver. And then of course we have some open storage under here with cargo netting to hold things in place. And finally, this little cabinet is very, very shallow. But I'll tell you a secret. You could keep your toilet chemical down there. Now, not just any toilet chemical because most toilet chemical bottles are big and round try Matt's Liquified. Those bottles will fit down there no problem and I guarantee you'll love his toilet chemical. So here I am sitting on the commode and you might notice above me is another shelf with some cargo netting to hold things in place. There's even a little towel ring over here but sitting on the commode in here I'm not going to necessarily pass the elbow test but even with the door in the closed position there's enough room in here that it actually feels very comfortable. And at the front of this travel trailer, there is pass-through storage. And just in front of the pass-through storage, on each side of this camper, there's also a little small storage area as well. 
Hey guys, let us know which one of these travel trailers you like the most and why in the comments down below. We would love to hear from you. But if you want to check out even more travel trailers under 20 feet long, just click the box down below and Susan and I will see you in the next video.